What if I told you there's a way to get faster, that some of the best runners and cyclists are doing it, and it's completely free? It's called heat training, and it's probably one of the most underrated and underused performance tools that you're not using. Heat training can help you perform better in the heat, but it can also help you perform better in cooler conditions, and even increase your red blood cells and hemoglobin mass. So I'm gonna go through what heat training is, the benefits of heat training, why I'm using it, and how I'm gonna implement it into my training. So what exactly is heat training or heat acclimation? At its core, it's about intentionally raising your body's core temperature during or after exercise. You're using heat as a form of stress, forcing your body to adapt. There's active heat training, running in warmer conditions or wearing extra layers while exercising to simulate heat stress. And then there's passive heat training, like sitting in a sauna or a hot bath. Ideally, you'll do this after exercise when your core temperature is already elevated. Both approaches challenge your thermoregulation system, making your body better at managing heat. And these adaptations don't just help in hot weather, they can help improve performance in cooler conditions too, by making your body more efficient under load. So let's start talking about some of the benefits. Firstly, you'll start sweating earlier at a lower core temperature and you'll sweat more. Your sweat also becomes more dilute, so you lose less sodium and chloride per litre. This helps reduce skin temperature and improves heat dissipation. Heat acclimation increases blood plaza volume by typically 4 to 18%. This boosts stroke volume, which means more blood per heartbeat, lowering heart rate at a given effort, and improving cardiac output. Perceived effort drops too. Training and racing simply feels easier thanks to improved cooling and cardiovascular function. Performance-wise, studies show heat training improves results by 4 to 8% in hot conditions and 2 to 5% in cool conditions. One of the most powerful benefits, and a key reason I'm doing this, is the hematological effect. Heat training for three weeks plus has been shown to increase hemoglobin mass by 1 to 4%, and hemoglobin is the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen. So a higher hemoglobin mass is a higher VO2 max, which then results in better endurance performance. For example, Ronstad et al. 2020 found a 4% increase after five weeks. Cubell et al. found a 3% increase after three weeks and 4% after five. So how does this happen? Well, heat increases plasma volume, which as a result means the red blood cell concentration in the blood drops. The body responds to this imbalance by releasing natural EPO, which then increases red blood cell production. Effectively, it's like natural blood doping. And with the more red blood cells, increased hemoglobin mass, better oxygen transport, results in higher VO2 max and lactate thresholds. So there are clear performance benefits to heat training, but I've also got some personal reasons. Firstly, it's summer, races are hotter, I want to perform better in the heat and reduce that usual drop off I see. I've always struggled in the heat. My race data backs it up and my training. I weigh 73 kilos and stand at about 175 centimeters. That's heavier than most athletes at my level. It's a known fact that bigger athletes can struggle in the heat more for two main reasons. One, they have lower surface area relative to mass. Heat is lost through the skin, so the more mass relative to surface area, the harder it is to offload heat or dissipate it. Two, the bigger you are, the more metabolic heat you can generate for a certain pace. For example, if an 80 kilo and a 60 kilo runner are both running at six minute per mile, the 80 kilo runner is expending more total energy to maintain that pace. That extra energy translates into more metabolic heat, which puts more strain on the body's cooling systems, making it harder to stay cool, especially in hot weather. Heat training can help build my confidence, make me see heat as a strength of mine. If I have done everything I can to be better in the heat, then I can stand on that start line feeling ready and confident. One unexpected thing I've noticed with heat training, both passive and active, is how mentally tough I feel like it's making me. They're uncomfortable, sometimes borderline unbearable. And that's kind of the point. You have to be switched on to complete them. And I honestly believe that helps build resilience that you can carry on into racing. Take the sauna, for example. When I get into the sauna after a hard treadmill session, my body's already under stress and my core temperature is elevated. The first 10 minutes feel fine. I use it as quiet time to reflect on the session, but then it starts to get tough. There's this weird moment when nothing is physically stopping me from getting out of the sauna except myself. And that's when the mental battle really starts. I have to use tricks to stay in. I break the time down in my head, focus on my breathing, distract myself. 
exactly how I would in a hard race. It reminds me of racing a 5K. It's all about staying calm and in control even when it hurts. I've come to quite enjoy that challenge. It's uncomfortable, but I really do feel like it's making me mentally stronger. Before we get into how I'm gonna use heat in my training, let's do a quick disclaimer. Heat is a stress. Just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean you should be doing it. Seek advice of a doctor, do your own research. I'm hoping this video piques your interest and you can actually go and look at some of the papers, look at the, some of the references that I've included in the description and work out your own protocol or whether heat is the right choice for you. One great place to start is the Core Sensor website. They've got a section on the website full of references on heat and they've also got protocols for beginners and more advanced protocols too. A few key practical takeaways, I guess. Uh, make sure you're hydrated before you start a heat session. You can hydrate during a heat session as well. And then afterwards, make sure you replace any lost fluids and electrolytes. If you're doing active heat, you can expect a big heart rate drift. So be aware of this. Don't try and hit the same paces, reduce the intensity and use heart rate as a gauge of how hard you're working. Remember, heat is a stress and there is a cost to this. So if you do it too much or you overdo it, then you will metaphorically cook yourself. Another thing to note is in many of the studies, they give their participants supplementary iron to build hemoglobin mass, you need iron. So if you are low on iron levels, then that is gonna be an issue and you're not gonna be able to increase your hemoglobin mass. I'm not gonna advise anyone to take iron, but it's something that you should maybe get your own bloods taken or it should be a consideration. And the final practical takeaway is that I would advise a natural cool down. Some people like to jump in a cold shower or an ice plunge or similar after going in the sauna, for example. But it has been suggested that this dampens or reduces the heat load and the heat stress. So you actually get less of a benefit if that's what you do. So a natural cool down will give you the most benefits. And I guess my final takeaway is prioritize actual fitness. Heat may be the last one or 2% to give you that extra boost but if you're not actually training well and getting fit, then it's pointless really. So I would do heat on easy days or do heat as a supplementary session rather than trying to do heat when you're doing a hard workout. Make sure you do your hard workouts in mild conditions if you can to get the most benefits. And additionally to that, if you try and do a hard workout and heat at the same time, you really are stressing the body more than you want to. So how am I actually going to use heat training in this block? Well, I'm gonna mix in a few different methods, some active and some passive, depending on the day and the training load. I'll use the indoor bike for sessions. I'll start with the shorter period of higher watts, just to raise my core temperature quickly. And once I hit the target heat zone, I'll drop the intensity into zone two and hold it there. That way, I'm not chasing fitness, I'm just trying to build that heat stress. Then there's the post-treadmill sauna sessions. So I'll do an easy run or a session on the treadmill and then go in the sauna straight after when my core temperature is elevated. I'll also potentially use hot baths after some runs on the days that I can't get to the sauna. And on easier running days, sometimes I'll wear extra layers to try and increase my core temperature on my easy runs. The Core app is really useful for this because you can log passive heat sessions like saunas or hot baths manually. So it tracks my overall heat exposure across the week, not just during the workouts. I can also use that core sensor for time on the indoor bike or runs where I go outside with lots of layers to try and get into that heat zone and get the best benefit of the heat session. I don't think you need a core sensor. It's gonna help me manage the heat load, but before I had a core sensor, I was doing heat sessions on the bike and you can pretty much tell that you get very hot and it's doing something. My plan is now to get 10 to 14 heat sessions in over the next two weeks, just trying to get some sort of heat in most days and that'll be the main adaptation block and then I'll back it back down to two or three sessions per week as more of a maintenance. This is what many of the studies have used and hopefully it'll have good benefits for me. Then later in the season I might do another one of those adaptation blocks where I do two weeks intensive. We'll see how it goes. I'm curious to see what difference it makes to my training, how I feel, how I perform in the heat but also just my fitness in general. So I'm gonna get stuck into heat and see if it has benefits for me. One thing to note about heat adaptations is it decays quickly. So there's a study where after two weeks, they were pretty much back to baseline. So with heat, it's very quick to get the benefits, but it's also very quick to lose them. That's why you've got to use two to three sessions a week as that maintenance block. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful in some way. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want a future vlog down the line after I've done the heat protocol, let me know. Or if there's anything else you want to see with regards to heat, then just let me know and I'll see if I can make a video on that. But yeah, I've got a bike session tonight. Time to get sweaty.